This is AP Precalculus. We are in notes for topic 2.3, Exponential Functions. So there's a lot of reading in this one. I'll just go through it as fast as I can. In math, we study several different types of functions. Three types of functions seem to keep showing up on every math course from Algebra 1 to Calculus. These three families of functions are also predominant, are featured predominantly on the SAT and the ACT. Here they are. We've got the linear, which is like 2 times x, quadratic, which is x to the power of 2, exponential, 2 to the power of x. Here's what the graphs look like. Exponential functions are some of the most important functions in the real world. They appear in many places, including population growth, money, including interest and debt, radioactive decay, spread of disease, etc. In addition, the SAT will include several questions that require an understanding of exponential functions. So let's talk about the key, character key, key characteristics of exponential functions. So in general, an exponential function has the variable in the exponent. You have some initial amount, some common ratio to the power of x, and we're going to assume that that common ratio is positive because if this is negative, this will alternate between positive and negative numbers. We want to keep it always positive. And we're assuming a is not 0 and b is not 1. If b were 1, then it would never change. We'd keep multiplying by 1, multiplying by 1, multiplying by 1, and never change. So here, a is going to represent the initial value. Um, I should also note that this is the same thing as the y-intercept. b represents the common ratio. Um, for exponential growth versus exponential decay, growth versus decay, exponential growth gets farther and farther away from the x-axis, and exponential decay gets closer and closer to the x-axis as we move to the right. And over here, exponential growth happens whenever we have a big base or big common ratio where that number is bigger than one. If that number is smaller than one, it's exponential decay. It can't be negative, so we say it's also greater than zero. But again, we compare this base, this common ratio to one. If it's bigger than one, it's going to go away from the x-axis as I move to the right. If this common base is less than one, it's going to get closer to the x-axis. Okay, so increasing versus decreasing. This is kind of interesting. So exponential functions are always increasing or always decreasing. They will never switch. There's no relative extrema. There's no maximum. There's no minimum. They're always doing one or the other, never both. Same thing for concave up and concave down. They're always concave up or they will always be concave down. Again, they never change. In order to change, they have to point inflection, which they do not have. End behavior, um, there's either going to be um, two, two possibilities. It will increase or decrease without bound, or it will approach zero. That means that when I go left or when I go right, I will either have, have infinity, negative infinity, or zero. There are only three choices with end behavior, so it's kind of easy, I suppose. All right, so let's do some examples. We want to practice writing the limit statements for these functions. So the left limit is the limit of this function, which I'm going to name f of x. Let's call this one h of x. And this one we can call g of x. Perfect. So they're all they're different names. So we're going to say that the limit of this function f of x, I want to go left so it's x approaches negative infinity. And the right will be the limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity. Okay, so as I go to the left, what happens? Again, we have three choices. It's either zero, positive infinity, or negative infinity. And again, another way of interpreting that down here is this says it either goes up forever, it goes down forever, or it goes the x-intercept. So, or the x, I shouldn't say x-intercept, I should say the x-axis. Those are your really three directions that we can choose. So as I move left, I'm getting closer and closer to this x-axis. Therefore, I'm getting closer to the height of zero. As I go to the right, I'm moving farther and farther away in the positive direction. So this is a positive infinity. Okay, what about over here for the graph of h of x? So let's do the limit of h of x. As I go left, this can be as x approaches negative infinity. As I go left, you can see that I'm going farther and farther away from the x-axis towards negative infinity. And what about the limit of h of x as x approaches positive infinity? As I go to the right, it's getting closer and closer to this x-axis, therefore that height is zero. And then this doesn't have a function, but I highly recommend making a graph for each of these. So 
this first number will represent what side of the graph we're on. You're either going to be on the top or we're going to be on the bottom, depending if this number is a positive or a negative. Because this number is a positive, we are going to stay in the top of our graph. Next, I'm going to look at the common ratio or the base here. This common ratio is less than 1, which means I'm going to be getting closer and closer to the x-axis as I move to the right, which means I'm going to have something that looks like that. This is going to be exponential decay. So as I move to the left, that's going to be the limit of g of x as x goes to negative infinity. And that's going to be equal to, as I go to the left, you'll see that I am moving in this direction. I'm going up forever and ever. The way I say up is positive infinity. So let's do the limit of g of x as x approaches positive infinity. When I go to positive infinity, I'm going to the right. I'm getting closer and closer to this x-axis. Therefore, I'm getting closer and closer to the height of 0. Okay, now we need to determine if we're concave up, concave down, and determine if we're increasing or decreasing. These typically go faster than most students. You can see that this is the height here is going down, 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 down. So we are decreasing, and this is purely concave up. So it's concave up and decreasing. This next one is clearly concave down, concave down, and these heights are getting lower and lower and lower, so the heights are decreasing. And again, for these exponential functions, you can have any mix. I could be concave up and increasing. I could be concave down and increasing. Any type of function will work here. In this next one, we don't have a graph, so let's make one for ourselves. The first thing that I notice is that this coefficient is positive, which means we're talking about the positive part of the graph as opposed to the negative height. And then this is a number that is bigger than 1, which means I'm going to be going farther and farther away from the x-axis. So I'm going to have something that looks like this. All right, this one is concave up, and the heights here are getting higher and higher and higher and higher, so this is an increasing and concave up function. All right, this one is a table. We have to determine, again, um, we've seen exponential, linear, none of these, but here's a new addition. It could also be a quadratic, so this is now a review of unit one. Quadratic means that the second differences are all the same. Linear means that the first differences are these all the same, and exponential means there's some sort of multiplication or the... Um, the change of these is going up by the same percent. So let's go ahead and let's start for the first differences. So I'm going to say the first D for difference. It's the first difference. I'm going up to, up four, up eight, and up 16. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and look at the second differences. Second differences. To get from 2 to 4, I'm going up 2. To get from 4 to 8, I'm going up 4. To get from 8 to 16, I'm going up 8. Interesting. J just to go through this path, what about the third differences? I'm going up 2, and I'm going up 4. Do you guys notice the pattern? Plus 2, sorry, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8. Plus 2, plus 4, plus 8. Plus 2, plus 4, and then this would have been plus 8 if this pattern had continued. It's the same numbers over and over again. Whenever that happens, it's actually exponential. I'll show you why. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for a sec because they are just repeated numbers. So now I'm going to look purely at the first differences and I'm going to look at the ratio of those differences. How much, what percent are these differences increasing by? This is getting multiplied by 2, so it's increasing by 200%, right? This is also being multiplied by 2. So this is, I'm going to look at the, the ratio. Um, and then again, I'm multiplying by 2, which is weird to talk about because we haven't done this before where we look at the, the common difference and then we look at the ratio of those common differences. You can look at that common ratio any time that you want. And any time that common ratio is the same for any of these common differences, then it's going to be exponential. So over here, um, this is exponential. And the rationale here is going to be a little bit harder to explain. So let's go ahead and write this all the way out. This is going to be exponential. And our rationale is going to be because the um, first difference, say first differences, are changing by the same percent. And I know some people might find that confusing, so I'm not sure exactly how the points will work for the AP test, but I think it might be okay to say that the um, first differences um, change by uh, multiplying by 2 each step. That might get you the full points, but I'm not sure because I'm recording this during the first year that AP calculus or AP pre-calculus has ever been offered. So we'll see um, if that's true or not. But I, I feel like that is less powerful of a definition or that's more powerful. 
Um, but maybe that'll give you four points. I'm not sure. All right, and that's the end of the lesson. So thanks for watching. Uh, notes for topic 2.3 in AP Precalculus.